Hey everyone, uh, this is just a quick tutorial on how to uh, run a query inside a form. So you're going to want to input data into that query and basically output your output for the query on the same form you put the data in. So it's sort of like putting data in and getting an output all in the one space and you're going to do this by pressing a button that runs a macro to update the query every time you change the input. Sort of confusing, but it will make a lot of sense once we get into it. So firstly, what you want to do is create a blank form or any type of form. Um, go to design view and we're going to use a combo box for this example. And it's basically a drop down list. So this is going to be our input. So we're just going to create this. Um, this is using my Uber Eats database for my assignment. And our example, we're going to have a drop down that has every order ID in the database. And based on that order ID, it's going to output the driver. So who drove the, the food for that order. Therefore, in our drop down, we're going to want all the order IDs. So I'm just going to set this up quickly. Uh, and the label for the combo, combo box is going to be called order ID. That's not so important at the moment hit finish and we've got ourselves a combo box. We These are all the numbers here that are all the order IDs stored in the database. Next, this is pretty important. You want to go into design view and you want to click on the this unbound drop down here, the combo actual combo box and you want to name it something. Um, I'm going to call it CB order ID. This is actually quite important so make sure it's something you remember and just hit save. And while we're at it, we'll save the form as form one. So there we go. Now we're gonna go across to this query that I've started to make. And as you can see, it's just selecting the driver ID, uh, the, sorry, the driver's name uh, from, from the table where the uh, order ID equals whatever's in the combo box. Um, now we need to add in a bit of code that detects what's in the combo box. So. I think Mr. Marsden made a tutorial on how to do this um, in the S in the design view rather than SQL view, but I prefer this a bit more. But either way, um, it's just this bit of code. So I put it here to remind myself. You want to type in forms exclamation mark the name of the form, so we called it form one, and then the name of the input box, so we called it CB order ID, and that's where it's going to look for that piece of data. That's that's where it's going to search for the, the number that's the order ID. So that's good now. If we hit save, this query's done. We'll close the query, we'll open this form, and we'll put this drop down to, let's say, 5. So when the order ID is 5, we should be able to run the query. The driver's first name is Steve. So that's working absolutely fine. Now let's get moving with this. We can make this um, this here into what do you call it a, a subform or an output form. So we're just going to do that using the form wizard. All we want it to show is the first name, so that's already detected that for us. And we want it data sheet because I think data sheet oh, data sheet looks the best when you're um when you're outputting or putting something in a subform. So we're just going to go with uh, data sheet. <clears throat> we'll call this uh, output form one just for the example and hit finish. So that's going to make this. So there we go. That's pretty simple. Not much difference. Um, but now if we close this, go back to the original form, go into design, we can drag in that output. So output form one, bang. Here it is. This is going to be our output form, and this is going to display the first name. So if I um, change this, eventually it's not going to work now. If I change the order ID, it's going to actually change the first name here. So the next step, we want to add a button that um, resets the query. So first what you want to do is go to create and create a macro. And a macro is basically uh, you program, uh, you know, a sequence of steps that the, uh, that the computer will run um, in order. But for this one, it's really simple. 
we're going to type in requery, um, and that's it. You're just setting up a macro that's going to requery on when the when the macro is called. So you call it requery. We can save this as oh, whoops. Save this as just macro one. That doesn't really matter. You could probably save it save it as something more meaningful. If this if you're actually doing this for real, we'll save it as macro one. So we can now close this and we can go to the form. Go back to design view and we want to add a button. And this is going to be like the submit button or the update button. We're going to make a button, we're going to go to miscellaneous and we're going to hit run macro. And we want it to run at macro one, which is the macro we just created. Text will just go update query. Uh, you can put in whatever you want in there, it doesn't matter. And this, of course, you'd probably name it something meaningful if you're actually doing this, but this is just a test for me. So we'll just command three is fine. This is the update query. And now, fingers crossed, if all is well, we should be able to change this number here in the drop down. So we want order ID 15 and update query. The first name in the driver was Harvey. And this should work no matter what. Greg. Steve, Steve again, Oops, Greg, uh, who have we seen, Patrick, etc, etc, it'll, you know, it works no matter what. So yeah, it's really, it's quite simple, really, in the end, and you can style this up so it looks a lot better. Um, instead of a combo box, you can use a text box, so if, you, if they want to input a date, so between this date and another date. It's really it works the exact same way. You just need to change the <clears throat> the name of the the box that you input in uh, in the query, and yeah, it's it's pretty simple. So anyway, thanks for watching and goodbye.